I think we can fairly describe Paul Kobe, where is he, as one of the most successful and most admired CIOs of his generation. In terms of career success, Paul is best known for his achievements at BA, where for 10 years he played a central role in moving the company from an organization that was really struggling to a thriving, vibrant, and highly innovative global airline. Under Paul's leadership, he built a technology team that effectively reinvented the travel industry. BA.com were the first in their industry to launch web calendar selling, the first to allow bookings to be changed online, the first to allow online check-in, and last year, the first to allow you to download your boarding pass onto your mobile phone, which I still quite haven't had the courage to do, but apparently you can. Um, in addition, they were also the first to introduce the cross-selling of hotels and car hire, which effectively opened up a whole new revenue stream for the airline. And remember, all of this was achieved against the backdrop of supposedly more agile competitors such as EasyJet and Ryanair. You'd think this was achievement enough, but Paul still had one more trick up his sleeve. There was a small matter of BA needing to invest in all this change, but without the cash to pay for it. So all of this was achieved with a technology budget that needed to reduce substantially year on year. Over the 10 years that Paul was in charge, the IS budget reduced by a remarkable 66% in real terms. Amongst all of this, Paul's, Paul also found time to play a leading role serving the airline industry as the chairman of CETA. He also chairs the CIO board of eSkills UK and has contributed hugely to their mission of improving the skills training for our current and future generation of technologists in the UK. And of course, he's also a successful author, having published a book entitled 50 Things I Wish I'd Known Before I Became a CIO, some of which I'm sure we'll be hearing about this evening. And that's not all. In the oodles of spare time that Paul so obviously has, he pursues his passion for Roman history and pre-1914 German railways, I hear. I kid you not. To come across, on a more serious note, to come across, to come across someone that's achieved as much as Paul whilst giving so freely of his time is a rare thing indeed. And it's the mark of the man that he's agreed to come and speak to us all this evening when he's just a couple of weeks into an extraordinarily demanding job uh, as the new IT director at John Lewis. Without further ado, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to Paul Covey. Thank you. Thank you very uh, much, Simon. I'm not entirely sure I recognize the, uh, the person that stands before you. Um, this has to be uh, one of the most uh, terrifying things I've ever done uh, in, in my life, um, almost as terrifying as meeting the headhunters uh, recently. Um, Firstly, because there's so many. Well, firstly, because there's so many of you in the room, and uh, blinded by these lights, I can't. Uh, can't perhaps it's one of. Uh, it's a good thing I can't see uh, see all of you. Um, secondly, because you know, um, uh, and uh, exactly what I'm going to talk about. Um, I am going to talk about being a CIO, being an IT director. Um, and uh, working in technology. And uh, I think uh, uh, that's pretty much what we all do here. Um, many of you are our close friends. Thank you very much for, for, for coming. And uh, many of you I know professionally. Uh, that means uh, I also know, as um, Richard said to me, uh, you know, uh, I won't be able to get away with anything because uh, you actually know what it's, uh, it's like. Um, so I think I'm the winner of uh, this year's Coles to Newcastle, or Teaching Granny to Suck Eggs Award. Um, and neither to help me do I have um, Barack Obama's speechwriters to help. Uh, so I'm going to try and nick one of his jokes to kick off in Westminster Hall yesterday. You remember that, uh, if you heard it, that he, he uh, made a rather good joke about previous speakers in Westminster Hall had been the Pope her Majesty the Queen, and now the President of the United States. So I asked Simon who else he'd had doing uh, this kind of uh, gig. And he said it was uh, the government CIO, um, the head of Saatchi's, the advertising agency, 
uh, and um, the head chap of a chocolate company. Now, similarly, there probably is a rather good joke in there somewhere trying to get out, but it's probably unrepeatable at this time of the evening, or indeed, uh, I don't make it. Um, but, uh, you know, clearly, uh, I don't have any speechwriters help me, though I was at one point a, a speechwriter in my time when I was in government. Um, now, um, I've got this, so I, I was going to try and attempt the Jake Humphrey thing for you uh, uh, F1 fans out there. So um, there is a hashtag, which is, um, I think, uh, Simon, L-F-A-C-O-B-Y. L -F -A -C -O -B -Y. Um, so uh, if any of you want to go there, so uh, many thanks to Speedbird Newcastle. Um, he's an old friend of mine um, uh, who, uh, who, who, who sent good luck. And there's somebody called S. Blanford, who's looking forward to hearing me. Uh, now, those of you who know me know that S. Blanford is my wife. So, <laughs> so uh, there you go. Um, now, um, I, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to signal for the next slide. Good. It works. Um, first thing to say is um, I really want th this evening to be useful to you. You know, uh, and I'm really not, uh, you know, as wonderful as, uh, as Simon made out at the start, as will become readily apparent as we go through this. But if um, at least some of you leave saying that you heard two or three things real pa practical use, I think uh, that would have been uh, uh, very uh, uh, useful indeed. So uh, that's really the test. And actually, when I did publish this thing, um, and actually I've self-published it, so I do commend you uh, lulu.com, if you keep getting those rejection letters as I did from the publishers, um, just stick it in an Adobe file, upload it, and uh, it's remarkable, another miracle of the internet. Um, so hopefully we get something uh, out of this. Could I have the next one, please? So what you can expect, um, some of you may or may not have read it, but anyway, what this thing does has 50 things that uh, I really thought I uh, you know, wanted to know. And I did it at a, a rather dull board meeting, and I'm not going to reveal what it was, but you know how these things drone on. So I thought, you know, I'll try and write down uh, a few things that uh, I, you know, I, I think you know, I, I ought to learn. And actually, they're originally written down as my own aid memoirs. So since I've just joined um, John Lewis, and uh, there's uh, Kevin, who's my uh, close colleague, my twin at... Uh, uh, Waitrose is here, and also some colleagues from John Lewis. Um, I thought it was actually quite a good time to mark myself out of 10 on these things. So I, I'm going to give you my personal marks and where I think I did well and uh, where I did less well, shall we say. Um, then I, are the 50 things still relevant uh, if you move from airlines to retail? Uh, a little bit about leadership, um, because people talk about a lot about it, and I think it's a uh, it's an interesting concept these days, particularly in the world of technology. Uh, a little bit about technology, because I think that really, really matters. Um, and uh, quite often, you know, when you hear all these uh, management twaddle that gets talked about being a CIO, they lead the technology out, which is a terrible shame. Uh, and then a few CIO maxims or one-liners at the end, and questions and some hopefully answers. And um, as Simon said, we're very keen that actually, um, you know, we can make this a bit interactive. Uh, it's both more fun and more dangerous for me, um, but I think probably more, more profitable as well. So uh, hopefully there'll be some time um, at the end. We can make some time uh, for some questions and uh, hopefully answers. Now, um, Roman history. Um, the actual first book I self-published uh, was... Uh, a tome called um, the governor, Roman governor Agricola's Conquest of Northern Britain, um, 77 to 84 AD. Um, a work of limited interest to <laughs> most people, but it's really good. There's some fabulous maps in there, and it really is groundbreaking stuff. So, you know, when you buy your 50 copies, you could get one of those as well. Um, but um, so I am going to try and make this a little bit different or look a bit different since I, I'm going to have. Um, some, uh, some uh, classical references in picture form as we go through, uh, some of which are relevant, some of which are, are less relevant. Anyway, um, so quick recap on what the 50 things are. This is Socrates, the great philosopher, laying down. I think that's the gesture. Um, 
uh, want things out. And here you see uh, somebody who didn't pay attention. He's very sad. Um, and uh, others going around. Next slide, please. Um, now, I promise I'm not going to talk about every one of these honest. Um, but I just wanted to sort of flash them up uh, just so you know what I'm talking about. And then I'm going to come on to the good ones and uh, uh, the less good ones. Uh, and the first lot were about getting started. Um, and, and the one thing here, and I don't know if there are any of my colleagues who did this job are in there, is appointing IT business partners. And uh, you know, I felt that in every job I've done as an IT director CIO, actually having somebody who manages that relationship into the business, who can actually protect you. And when I first became CIO at British Airways, I felt like the ball in the pinball machine because all the directors were demanding things. They were telling me their blinking BlackBerry didn't work. Um, and they were saying, you know, I need a new system. I've got to spend 20 million quid on that. Don't you? And, 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 and. You will know exactly what that's like. So actually allocating some of your guys to face off to um, the, each part of the business, um, I really, really think is, the, uh, is, uh, is a key, key thing to do and uh, absolutely something that I think protects the, uh, the, the, the CIO uh, from being pulled every which way. But it also um, gives um, the directors, the departments in the business, somebody they can see really as their IT person, somebody they can rely on. And their job is to make the IT department perform and also um, to inspire the business with actually what technology can do for the business. Next, please. Um, running smoothly. Um, keep it and keep IT simple. The one thing I can't stand, and it's probably, um, no, it isn't because of that. I, the one thing I really, really can't stand is when people in IT start talking obscurely. Uh, now, every, every profession's guilty of this in terms of um, trying to you know, you know, sound good, you know, saying obscure, you know, muttering about service-oriented architecture and Linux and, uh, and, and all sorts of things, and, and then actually talking to the business in terms they can't understand. I think our job as IT directors, as CIOs, as chief technology officers, as IT professionals, is to demystify technology, is to explain it to people, to inspire people with what they can do with technology. So, you know, if you do find yourself talking acronyms, or if you, uh, you know, start behaving as some people do, like we're the priests of an obscure religion that nobody else is allowed to understand, it's a mystery. Be very, very careful because people will switch off and they won't get it. Thanks, please. They were all this lot. Uh, understand your CEO's business strategy and support it. I mean, that's really why you're there. You know, you, you, you know, you're not an academic IT department pushing the boundaries of research. What you're there for, and this applies as much to a government department or a charity in the, char in, in the charitable sector, but you know, in terms of the private sector, you know, what's the boss want to do? What's the transformation he or she is trying to make in their business? And get on that agenda. There are 10 million other distractions. But at the end of the day, um, they are presumably the person that appointed you. What do they want? What do they want from their technology? It may be they want it to run very smoothly and very cheaply. That's great. It may be that they want it to totally transform the business. Uh, as we are in retail, the place is absolutely changing because um, business is going online and absolutely having a multi-channel retail site is absolutely where you have to go. Very, very different, but get on the key agenda. Next, please. Managing your team. Um, getting the IT organization structure right. This isn't easy. Um, I think there's some fundamentals here, but it is so important to actually have a cohesive, functional, top team that is pulling together, that is aligned. And really, I think it's pretty simple. Um, what you need are some people who design the technology, the new technology, do the architecture. You need some people who build the new stuff. You've got some people who operate and run it. And they're really three key boxes. Now, you can have different numbers of people in those, but you know, design, delivery, operate are really the heart of it. You need somebody then to actually look after the business, keep the scores, keep the money, and then you need the relationship, the relationship managers or manager out front. Very important, that. Next one. 
and all this stuff um, which is in there, but personally review projects. If you like, those are the big set pieces. Those are the cup finals of the uh, IT world, um, you know, where you are putting in a new system. Now, we all know um, that actually sometimes you can put things in quiet live and introduce them, and that's great, and uh, I'm sure we'd all do it uh, that way. But sometimes you have no alternative but to pull a metaphorical big red lever, turn the old system off, and bring the new one up. And at that point, you are going to be answerable to the chief executive and the board or the minister or whoever it is um, about whether that works. So you really, really, really need to assure yourself personally that it's going to. And um, I've had some near misses um, and some uh, very difficult launches. Um, and uh, I you know, attribute some of those things to not being that personally involved. So don't get involved in everything, but absolutely get involved in the key launches, the big you know, the, the big launches where your reputation, the company's reputation, your department's reputation, and how your customers feel about you is at stake. So, um, I then marked myself, and, uh, uh, and uh, thank you, Microsoft. There is a way of putting it on this kind of spidery or maple leaf diagram. And there are 50 around here. Um, Nought's pretty rubbish, 10's pretty good. Um, I'm going to talk about some of these, uh, and uh, really, I, and uh, my apologies, Simon. You know, this does rather blow my cover in terms of what you said at the start. You know, which is, um, you know, it, it ain't easy uh, this sort of stuff. So I'm going to talk about that one. Well, I mean, certainly enjoying being CEO and love your industry. I, I mean, I've loved being in airlines. I, I, I love being in retail. The challenges. Um, Fantastic. Um, communication. Um, really feel I could uh, do a lot uh, better on that than I, uh, uh, that, than I have done. Um, I certainly, uh, and I've got the scars to prove it, haven't paid attention to audit issues as much as I might have done, or has been as integrated with the procurement folks, and so forth, um, and looking after top people's IT and things like that. Um, I think if I can actually work out how to build a website properly, I, I, I may stick this up online. So uh, anybody who felt like it could try and mark yourselves. It might be uh, quite fun. I mean, goodness knows whether that's accurate and whether if I gave it to uh, my colleagues who are in this audience, they would mark me the same way. Um, but I think it's just worthwhile testing oneself uh, to see how one does. So what did I think I did well? Uh, well I certainly enjoyed being... CIO. Um, fortunately, that's in the present tense. Um, not being afraid of IT. I think don't talk gobbledygook, but don't be afraid of talking about technology. You know, this, you know, we are very privileged to be in a place where the world is being transformed by technology. More of that later. You know, it is a, a fabulous time now. Um, you know, all sorts of things are happening. Whole industries are being changed by technology. Uh, and actually, that's you know one of the great things we're there for, to talk about it, to communicate it, to explain it, to demystify it. Uh, being a non-exec director, it expands, you know, I, I certainly do the things that Simon talked about, but they're really useful. So I found that when I was sort of dragged up before the British Airways board, um, you know, to talk about um, why we'd had a few bumps in the road when we put in a new reservation system, reservation system being rather important for an airline, um, that... Um, Actually, I could, because I'd been on a board, I actually had a perspective in terms of how it felt. And it's quite interesting. Those of you who are non-exec directors in the audience will know the kind of latent paranoia that being on a board produces. Um, you know, because you only see uh, the executives, you know, what, you know, eight times a year or even once a month. Um, and, uh, you know, they tell you everything's fantastic and it's all going very, very well. Uh, and then it doesn't. So... Very interesting perspective. Good to broaden your horizons, I think. Uh, the industries you're in, as I said, that's fantastic. Cut IT operational costs. That was um, over 60% in real terms. Uh, it's about 50% in cash, but it was very hard work 
and I cannot personally claim credit for it. I can absolutely riding on the shoulders of uh, the operational people in BA who chased every penny um, over the 10 years I was CIO. Um, and uh, managing supplier relationships. I don't know if there are any suppliers in the room or whether they'd uh, agree. Um, but I think, you know, having a great relationship with suppliers is really key. A bit more of that later. N next, please. So, enjoy being CIO. I said I'd give you some classical references. Um, it's no bed of roses, although this, uh, this appears to be. Um, uh, this was uh, a Roman emperor called Heliogabulus, who... Uh, eventually came to believe he was the sun god. Um, don't do that as CIO. Not good if you think the sun shines. Um, so, in being CIO, enjoy it. Um, you know, it is a fabulous opportunity. Um, you know, whether, you know, I, IT is fashionable or not at the time, but actually you've got a, a department that actually looks across the whole range of what your company does. Um, you can actually join up the dots. You can see the very, very big picture. Um, and it's vitally important. I said, look after your homework life balance. Um, my wife and daughters are in the audience, and they can confirm that um, maybe I'm not that good at that. Um, but do try to get it right, and keep on trying. Um, as I say, I enjoyed it very much. In, in British Airways, we had 9-11 strikes, fuel price rise, banking crisis, uh, Icelandic volcanoes, which have come around again. Um, we also had polonium, um, where... Um, as you may recall, some uh, gentleman who may or may not have been connected with the Russian state travelled on a BA plane from uh, Moscow to London. Uh, and then you could take a Geiger counter on the plane and um, see where they'd actually been sitting. Fortunately, the half-life is only about three or four days uh, of that. But, you know, just try predicting that lot on a risk register. So you never know what's coming, um, what, you know, what will flow it, throw at you. But actually, that's half the challenge. And I'm really having a ball at John Lewis learning a new industry, uh, learning about retail, very fast moving. So absolutely, you know, do, do, do have a ball, do enjoy it. Um, you know, it doesn't mean it's easy, but it's important to enjoy it. Yes, cut IT operations costs. This is a sack of the Rome by Vandals in 465 AD. Um, you don't actually have to do it this way or, um, uh, you know, behave uh, like a vandal. Uh, but it is important to uh, uh, deal with um, operational costs. Whoops, back, 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 back. Thank you. Can you go up one? I think you're going forward. Right. This is interesting, isn't it? Keep going, up. Here we were. Yes, cut out your operations costs. Um, do try to reduce the year-on-year -year costs of IT operations each year. Um, you know, the unit costs of technology are going down. Uh, there are plenty of outsourcing salespersons uh, that will be telling your CFO that that's the case. Um, there is Moore's Law, uh, which we know, um, you know, depending on uh, what you believe he said first, uh, doubles the par uh, on a transistor every 18 months or 24 months. There is, of course, uh, the Gates law, which means that technology bloats at the same rate uh, and prices stay at the same. Um, but your job, I believe, is to drive the costs down. Um, and um, you can do this. It's the best answer to the efficiency challenges that you will get. Um, and uh, as I say, I was entirely dependent on the, um, uh, the hard work and expertise and professionalism of uh, the IT operations people, um, both in uh, British Airways and John Lewis. Um, but the good news is you can then use the savings to fund IT investment um, going forward, if that's what the company wants. But if you can demonstrate that year on year, the overall cost of what you do is getting better, even though you're doing more, um, that is a great way to argue that you need to invest more to save and to increase functionality. And that was really the heart of, as Simon said, what we were trying to do in British Airways. Managing supplier relationships. I rather like this one. Um, because, uh, I, and uh, you can supply who this uh, is. Um, that's Julius Caesar and that's Virkin Getterix, the, uh, the Gallic leader. And I like to see myself in the role of Julius Caesar 
and uh, the Oracle salesman in that role or something like that. Um, <laughs> sorry, David. Um, or maybe this one, you know, the bound, bound one. Um, next week. Next slide. Um, so I think it's really important that you're responsible for managing the company's overall relationships with the key suppliers. As I said, you know, the key tactic of our outsourcing salesman is to sell around uh, a chief information officer, IT director, uh, and say that, you know, the turkeys are, uh, uh, you know, are not going to vote for Christmas. They're in thrall to other suppliers. Uh, be absolutely sure you can rebut those allegations. Um, you know, IT matters to the, your company. It's so important that it works. Most companies I've ever come across, and most boards, take technology for granted. And it's very, very hard to get this over. You know, however tempting it is to go to the data center and pull the plug out, don't do that. Um, but, you know, if it's running very well, and 99.99% of the time, touch wood, we know it is, um, then you're taken for granted. So you have to find really some way to do that, and actually managing the supplier relationships about that is important. Final point on that one is, um, you know, to be really clear where IT should be. And most companies, certainly companies like British Airways, and I think to some, some extent John Lewis as well, you know, have a culture of perfectionism. And it's quite hard to tell a colleague on the board that actually, um, you know, a finance system that is a commodity is quite good enough. Um, and actually, where we need to differentiate ourselves is on our web page. Sort of sounds quite obvious until you actually have to tell the director face to face. So, you know, being clear where technology sits, whether it's a commodity, fast follow, or a leading edge, I think is also really important. Right, now this gets more interesting. What I didn't do so well. Um, I'll talk about some of these. Planning my time. Uh, I always try to do too much, as Simon amply demonstrated. Um, being human, uh, talk about that later. Communications. Projecting performance, that's about actually this point I was just talking about, about getting over. Actually, how difficult getting modern technology in a corporate environment right is. Um, supporting top people's technology. Um, come on to that later. Um, supporting uh, my, my PA and uh, the core team. Sorry, Sue. Um, and uh, enforcing technical standards and keeping close to procurement. So those were some of the things that when I did my marking, I felt I needed to do better on. I'm just going to talk about a few of those. Planning my time. Here's Archimedes um, doing it properly. Need to be strategic about this. And I had this um, rule of thumb when I was at British Airways, spend 20% time a day a week, on average, communicating with uh, people, partners in the IT department. Another day on the management of the department. Another day on strategic programs. So, as I said, you know, one of the big events of any CIO IT director's life is that big cutover. So, really knowing where you are on those big transformational projects and actually spending time not with the of delivery or the big, uh, you know, the, the, the guy from IBM or Deloitte who's putting it in, but absolutely talking to your team and actually getting them to a space where they feel confident with you. Because at the end of the day, um, you know, everybody's going to want to go live with that new project. Some guy down there knows that actually we haven't really tested, you know, that interface properly, or he knows he's getting some you know, a rather large number of failures, and he doesn't really know what the impact of that is. However, you know, we've said we're going to go live, and we're going for it. You have to be very brave if you're a junior person in a business or IT department to put your hand up and say so. So, you know, you want to know those guys. So, you know, if they've got a real problem, they're going to let you know. They're going to really feel that they can be honest about what the risks are, because you'd much rather know before it goes live than afterwards. Um, then 10% on the big change programs, and then 10% on whatever else hits you. Now, in any given week, I absolutely never, ever, ever, ever did that. Um, and, um, you know, quite a lot of weeks, 
I, you know, felt so tired at the end of them I didn't check back, but sometimes I did. And it actually helps you reset your priorities. And you can change those and, 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 and move those around uh, as necessary. Uh, but really important at least to try and set targets. And I've tried to do that for my new role, and guess what? I'm not sticking to it, but there you go. Yeah, try to be human. Uh, this is uh, The Vitruvian Man by uh, Leonardo, very well known. Um, I, I just wonder who the guy standing behind him was. Anyway, um, so this is a tough one for us classic IT introverts. Uh, you know, uh, we're, we're all uh, INTPs probably, or at least everybody in my teams always tend to sort of cluster there. Um, you know, and people expect a lot from us, um, and they need leadership, more of that later. Um, we make mistakes, and, and the trouble is, you know, with all the searchlights on, on, on you, it's actually, um, you know, quite hard, you know, to admit that uh, you have made mistakes. And uh, I, I know one of the things that uh, I talked about uh, sometime after T5 was the things that went wrong on the launch, you know, some of which uh, were down uh, to me in my department, some of which were down to uh, other parts of the organization. Um, you know, it clearly hadn't, hadn't, hadn't worked however hard everybody, and my God, we in BAA and everybody worked very hard to try and get it right and then sort it out. So, you know, it's important to, to do that. Important to try and talk to people um, and communicate. Um, and again, you know, I know I don't do enough of this. Um, and it's quite hard. I, I mean, and one of the things I find very hard is, you know, is, is just to drop by and sort of uh, say hi. I, I, the, the device I've adopted is to actually try and pick a project and the project team and the team leaders and to um, ask them just to talk me through what they're doing. Uh, that avoids the kind of Prince Charles effect of, you know, hello and what do you do, uh, you know, well, I build systems, you know, sort of thing. Um, and actually, you know, you then learn a hell of a lot, and it's usually a lot better than the budget meeting you were sitting in with the finance guys. Um, so uh, that's one I must try hard at. Communicate. Uh, this is Gracchus addressing the people. Um, and I, I, I love this as a sort of dramatic... Uh, symbol in uh, about 120 BC. I suppose this is the uh, equivalent of Twitter then. Um, L-F-A-C-O-B-Y, right? Um, next. So communicate, communicate, communicate. Um, talk about, you know, what's going on. Um, I think people in IT departments are very, very analytical. Well, that's probably why you hired them. So, you know, People want to know the reasons for things. In my experience, the worst times are when you don't tell people what's going on. And everybody being human just assumes the worst. Uh, you know, even if there's some tough messages, and uh, certainly in those things going on in uh, you know, the last 10 years in British Airways, there were some very challenging messages in terms of uh, you know, nearly going out of business <coughs> on at least once occasion, maybe twice. Um, certainly a lot of, uh, you know, reductions in manpower and things like that. But I've always found that, you know, if you do take the time, however painful and difficult it is, people do make the effort to understand. Um, now, I wrote this in 2007. Life's a bit different now. Uh, you know, we wikis, blogs, tweets, um, injunctions and so forth we've got. So we've got more tools and really more challenges. Um, I think it is really important to go for that. Um, and I think it's really important for the IT department and the IT director to have a bash at this stuff because, uh, you know, actually that's one of the frontiers for technology. And, uh, you know, certainly one of the things in terms of um, retail, it's absolutely uh, a space, Facebook or Twitter, uh, that you need to occupy. And a lot of your customers are out there. So I, I think using it internally is interesting. But... It doesn't matter how you do it, and I suppose the key thing I'm saying is do something that you're happy with. Um, communication is just so important. Project your department's performance. Uh, this is Cicero addressing the Senate, um, but I like to think of this as the board. So here you have the board, and there's the IT director. Poor chap, no friends. You know, um, he, he's just told them they can't have an iPad, uh, and they're not talking to him. <laughs> Ah, you have been there then, yes, right. 
So you really need to get your performance across. Um, and you really need everybody to do it. Um, again, one of the most unedifying uh, spectacles is um, the sort of people from the IT department having an unpleasant spat of which particular flavor of Linux is best in front of their customers. Um, their customers couldn't give a damn, but they're very, very worried um, by uh, seeing that sort of spectacle. Um, it's a bit about how do you convey when nothing's going wrong, actually how very good that is. Um, don't overpromise. I think one of the tendencies of IT folks, and uh, I feel it in myself and I've seen it in uh, my departments, is to want to please the business, because you're actually part of the business. We want to do well, we joined the company, uh, you know, because we want to be part of it. So, you know, you get pushed and pushed and pushed, and then you overpromise. So actually, instead of actually delivering something on time and on budget, you end up being three months late against some, a target that you've imposed on yourself that's actually very, very challenging. So however hard it is, try not to overpromise. Uh, I think it, it, it is really important. You don't win any friends. In fact, you probably win friends by being really objective about how difficult things are. And I think that's something that uh, a lot of IT folks, not, not people at your level, but a lot of our people don't get. Um, managing the perception of the IT department, very important. You know, you need everybody bought in. And the only way you'll get people bought in is by convincing them and arguing things and being prepared to take tough questions. IT for VIPs. Um, here you see the coronation of Napoleon. Uh, and he's giving Josephine her first iPad. Um, how do we get there? Um, this is, as you all laughed when I made the iPad joke, uh, so we've all been there. Uh, this does matter terribly, you know, because actually um, the most experience of people at the top of the business, and certainly people on the board, uh, and quite a lot of board members have, is of, you know, what are in reality the rather, you know, lesser important things like, does the email work, you know? Uh, can I download the FT on my iPad? It's not secure, but it's the FT. I don't get it. You know, so um, that's what they, they see. And if, if the basics aren't being run, they, they never use the core systems. They, you know, they don't have any perception of that. That's what the rest of the business does. That's what the frontline people do. But you know, if you can't deliver the email successfully or cost effectively, when somebody throws a rock, uh, you know, from the uh, supply chain, they might just believe them um, rather than you. So this really does matter. And one of the things we did um, in the days when uh, you were allowed to call people geeks um, was, um, you know, way back we provided um, the, the British Airways executive team with their own personal geek. Uh, he was a really nice guy. Um, he's not in the room, I think. Um, he looked the part. Uh, you know, so uh, that was important, and uh, you know, had long hair. Uh, you know, a bit casual. Went to good concerts. You know, was laid back. You know, not like the rest of us in the IT department. So, um, and uh, he went round and actually made it easy for all the BEA directors. Of course, it's all changed now. Who were terrified of technology, weren't prepared to admit that they couldn't even sort of load a spreadsheet. Um, you know, to actually do that in a risk-free way and actually try the good stuff. So, you know, I think in many ways a kind of fear of, you know, the, the, the hostility to technology is actually motivated in many ways by fear. So, you know, uh, if these days the VIPs want to read the FT in the morning on the iPad, we ought to find ways um, to do it if they think it's cost effective. Uh, and if you can't run the email, no one will believe you can run the IT operation. So this is my favorite one. You've got to enforce technical standards. Uh, these are the reenactors, the Yeoman Street Guards. Uh, somebody's just uh, you know, uh, made a hole in the firewall, and they're off to go and sort them out. You do have technical standards. Everybody's got technical standards. Um, quite often, uh, because we want to be helpful, um, we compromise, or that's what I Very often, you get tremendous pressure 
from one department that's just got to have things, and they usually have just got to have things. Or, you know, heaven forbid, and this did happen to me once uh, with a BA director long gone, uh, they met somebody on a golf course who just had the system that would solve all his problems, and he was fool enough to believe it. Um, now, you know, the pressure's on you to accept it, to compromise, to put something that's non-standard in, are going to be very, very great. However, what you end up doing is optimizing a small part of the business or becoming somebody's best mate for half a day at the cost of sub-optimizing the whole business. And we all know that what kills you in technology, not just in cost terms, but also in security terms and efficiency terms, is complexity and non-standard. We're all, I'm sure in this room, wrestling uh, you know, with inherited complexity and desperately trying to simplify things. So do have the technical standards, we sure got them, and do enforce them. Um, as I say, you sit at the intersection of the business. You know, our core thing is we all run complex businesses. Hopefully they're expanding. Some of them are buying other businesses. Some of them are expanding overseas. Um, you know, John Lewis is going to go uh, international um, in uh, a few weeks' uh, time online. Um, you know, exciting stuff. To do all that, you have to connect it all up. That's the fun bit. You know, we are the glue that pulls the business together. To do that, you have to have technical standards. You have to really, really stick to them, I believe, um, because they're the glue of the business and the glue of your department, and they are the mechanism for driving down those costs in the long term time frame, and they also make you secure. Okay. So, are these things universally applicable? Are they still applicable? Um, here's a picture of the Universal City Rome. You see it is all cunningly put together. Um, whoa. Oh, come on, come on. I think that's the next one. Yeah, it is. Um, so what's changed since I wrote 50 things? How we use IT. Um, social networking. You know, uh, it's here. You know, like it or loathe it. Be a saddo like me who sort of tweets and you know, likes all that stuff, or that's the last thing you do. It is changing the world, and it's not just generational. Um, you know, um, we know in John Lewis, uh, we've got uh, lots of our, our customer base uh, all the way through all age groups uh, there. Um, it's, you know, it's not geographical. You know, it's, it's global, and it is changing a whole load of things as the legal profession has found out. Um, I've changed my job from airlines to retail. Uh, and technology, I think, is getting even more exciting. I can remember a period about three or four years ago when everybody was going, was trying to find a new thing. It's all the same old, same old. Well, it's not like that now. Uh, you know, um, Google's been uh, sort of assailed by Facebook, and who knows what will be the next mega giant. And yes, IT is cool again. I realize that only a 50-something would write a sentence like that, but uh, I actually do feel that, you know, um, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Jobs, uh, that uh, technology is actually very cool. And all those unreasonable requests that we get are because everybody is really, really using technology and sees its power. So um, this is the only specific slide in the whole thing, but British Airways and John Lewis, um, not necessarily as different as you would think. They are clearly different. Um, but in IT, uh, there's some similarities. Importance of online. Um, it is remarkable how, you know, the online revolution is, is changing whole industries. Um, you know, I, you can feel in terms of, uh, the, you know, the sales figures that, uh, that come, th come through. Uh, you know, the absolute uh, growth of online. So in the shops, we're holding our own, uh, even the teeth of a very difficult trading position. Uh, but uh, online continues to grow in double digits uh, every day, every week, in every category. Mixture of legacy and ultra-modern. I think probably anybody who's in a, uh, a company that's been around any time has oodles of legacy. You know? um, and, you know, remember, you know, today's legacy is last year's fabulous leading-edge system. Um, good news about legacy is it probably runs on, um, uh, you know, some rather old uh, equipment that's fully written down, um, which is nice. 
uh, if it's still there, every bug that existed in it's been taken out of it. And, uh, you know, it may be much despised and it may be a bit inflexible, but at least it runs. And anyway, you've got it, so you need to make the most of it. Um, and then you've got the mixture of the ultra-modern ultra leading edge stuff. And that's part of the challenge as to how you pull all that up together. And absolutely the same. You know, two uh, IT departments are very skilled, very professional, uh, very uh, committed uh, IT teams. And Kevin Berry, um, who's in the audience, is the IT director at uh, Waitrose, was uh, one of my predecessors as uh, IT director at John Lewis. Um, what's different? Well, I think the speed of retail, the, the damn thing moves so quickly. Uh, you know, it's amazing. Um, so at 12.30, or if things are running a bit slow, 12.35, uh, you know, I get the file through, which tells us, anybody on the board, how much we sold in the previous day in every single shop, in every single category. You know, you could instantaneously feel how the business is moving and how it's going, which is uh, a lot faster than... Uh, I was used to in, in the airline business. Um, however, I think online business revolutionized, as Simon said in his intro, uh, the airline business You know, with things like online check-in and um, dynamic packaging of products and barcodes on boarding passes and so on and so forth on mobile um, rather faster than it has in retail. But it does absolutely feel it's been revolutionizing at the moment. And then the other thing is our, is our very ambitious uh, uh, growth plans that we've got. And as I said, we're going uh, international online in a few weeks' time. So leadership really matters in IT, as it does everywhere. Uh, this is a picture of a late Roman cavalry leader. It's from the film King Arthur. I put it there because I rather like it. Um, it is actually rather inappropriate for leadership in the 21st century. So what does it mean to lead? Um, I did the boring thing and looked in the Oxford Dictionary. And there are several definitions there, but this one actually sort of started to work for me. Um, be in charge or command of, that is, organize and direct. Be the principal player of a group of musicians. Set a process in motion. Begin a report of text with a particular item. In boxing, make an attack, lead. In card games, play the first card. So some of those sort of work. So leadership in technology requires you to organize and direct people and resources. And I think that's really important. You know, a lot of the things I've been talking about are about that. It's about organizing them, getting the structures right, but also giving direction, setting direction. Setting processes in motion. I think processes are a really key thing that CIOs and IT directors have got. I think our people and we understand processes. We can see the end-to-end -end business. We're rather good at process. You're probably better than most people in your business at process, as you are with project management. So setting processes in motion, I think, is important. I like this one. You conduct expert professionals like the leader of a group of musicians. As I say, you know, technology really matters. At the end of the day, when something goes horribly wrong at 3 in the morning and the feed doesn't go through or uh, the new release isn't, you are going to rely on Fred or Jane or, and their expertise and their understanding of how it all fits together. You know, you absolutely have groups of very talented people uh, you know, who understand an awful lot. And I, I like the idea that actually leadership in IT is about conducting. I think that's, ra that's rather good, you know, because everybody has to be in time, in tune, um, on the beat. And then sometimes you do need to lead, as in boxing, to fight your corner and indeed take the bullet for your people and stand up and say, actually, um, we can't do everything. It's just impossible. Or if you want to put that change in this new release, you know, I can guarantee that it's going to fall over. Um, so I think sometimes you do have to uh, stand up and take it. I, I did sometimes feel it was, I should have put it in here actually, that picture of Nelson walking around the, uh, the, the deck of the victory being shot at uh, by, by the snipers of uh, the enemy, um, while the people who could really win the battle got on and solved it. So if any of you have ever had a serious outage on a key system, you will know that the CIA's job is to ring up the chairman and the chief executive and to say, yeah, we've got a problem. No, we don't know what the cause is. Uh, 
I think we uh, may be able to bring it back, but I can't be certain I'm going to ring you in another 30 minutes. And then to hold the phone away from the ear. <laughs> and to take it, and to take the bullets for your people. Because what they don't need is a bunch of people who don't know anything about technology um, demanding answers they can't give. They need to find a solution. So I think it's very important to, uh, to necessarily do that at the right time. I, I quite like this definition because it's not, not as militaristic as the picture. Uh, you know, it's got the music in, it's got the processors in, uh, but it's not too woolly either. But technology really matters too. Here's a bit of Roman technology, Pont du Gard in, uh, in southern France, uh, a wonderful piece of technology. Um, and it's not quite a normal bridge, of course, is it? Because if you think about it, this amazing structure runs water across there, and it's an aqueduct. And that aqueduct runs something like 60 miles from the source to Arles, the Roman city. And of course, that has to slope down ever so gradually over those 60 miles, otherwise it won't work. So, you know, imagine, you know, if they hadn't done their user acceptance testing, how that would have felt. Anyway. So, my five C's, technology for the future, and uh, I can claim no great originally, originality here. Um, and, uh, you know, and apologies for the alliteration. Um, but consumerization, you know, everything is going to become or at least start to be dressed up like an app. Um, you know, um, Apple... Uh, and Steve Jobs have trained everybody to accept th expect things to work that easily, to swipe them, hit them, and they work. So, you know, everybody's going to try and build things like that because, you know, th things are supposed to be easy to use. I remember we used to have a training course for the call center agents in British Airways, which took two weeks. Two weeks to do what? To take a phone call from somebody, um, to do what? To book a ticket on a flight there and back to Paris. Two weeks training through very complex green screen systems. Then we put it online and then all our customers could do it. So why do you need all that complexity? So um, I think we need to think about the way what people expect from it. Call centers are there to sell you, uh, to upsell, to uh, absolutely deal with issues and problems. I'm not saying you don't need call centers. But sure as hell, you don't need call centers for things that most of your customers can do in a second. Connectivity. Yeah, I think we all recognize this. Everyone connected anywhere, anyhow, anytime. Uh, and that's going to be really, really important. We're absolutely staggered in British Airways, and I'm absolutely staggered in John Lewis by the value and extent that people now have confidence in doing things online. They will spend lots of money um, when they get some downtime. You know, so maybe some of you at the back are a bit bored by this. I hope you're buying something on johnlewis.com, you know. Um, convergence. This is an interesting thing. The, the, this is the Internet of Things stuff, which you've all heard about. You know, the fact that they're going to be allegedly, I don't know who counted them, one trillion IP addresses this year. Um, the way I bring this one to life is, and, uh, I, I, and uh, I, I need to develop a John Lewis one, but this is a British Airways one, which is, if you think about an A380, it's got a part. Um, the parts are monitored um, uh, and, uh, you know, can, can signal back. You know that that part is going to reach its going out of life point in eight hours' time. So you know you can, can finish the flight from Sydney to Singapore, but you know your A380 is going to go out of service in Singapore, which means you've got 580 passengers in different cabins with different expectations. Um, that means you need to get a new aircraft or two new aircraft down there. That means the crew will go out of ours. Uh, that means you need another crew or another two crews that will be there to get there, um, and so on and so forth. And you need to rebook everybody to get back, and you need to make sure the bags come off and there. And you need to cater the aircraft. You've got to remember that you've got to do and so on and so forth. So that message will tell you lots of different things. Oh, and by the way, to get the new part from the engineering department down there. And if you can connect that lot up, if you can use the, that amount of information in intelligent systems that interrelate, and I think everybody's a, a long, long way from that, but if you can actually use that information, you can get a real drop on your competitors because when the A380 uh, lands at Singapore, you've booked all your passengers into the appropriate hotels. Um, you've got some aircraft heading down from London that you'll be able to rebook them on. You are already rebooked, and you've turned 
a really bad customer experience into something that you've recovered, and you've recovered before anybody knew it happened or was going to happen. So I think there's some really interesting things about how you connect things and people and systems and processes. Collaboration, tools for us to connect at work and at play, and in between as well. Um, I, you know, I, I, I absolutely uh, feel that we ought to use all this social networking stuff in the workplace as well. Uh, you know, to, and um, I, I know examples that I've sponsored in terms of uh, wikis and doing that. I think we should really absolutely use that. And of course, the cloud, uh, which has been hyped to death by the salesman, but absolutely, I think, has the right sort of um, applications that people can use. And uh, in my capacity as chairman of CETA, um, we have announced an, an airline business private cloud with six centers around the world. So basically, any airline in any airport will be able to uh, run their basic services uh, out of the CETA cloud. Now, highly unlikely um, of our business, we've said we're going to be a one billion online business uh, you know, reasonably shortly uh, in British Airways um, where 30% um, of sales by volume uh, is on the website and another 10% indirect on other people's websites. Uh, in British Airways, where at T5, 40% or 50%, I think, now use online check-in and on a busy day uh, of the week and 30% um, use um, uh, the kiosks. What I always used to tell um, uh, the guys in the data center is they're front line. They actually sell more tickets than any other channel um, and they also check in more people than the people on the check-in desk. So, you know, it is really customer-facing IT these days. Get onto your business's strategic agenda. What really matters to the CEO? Love the technology. Don't be afraid of it. Explain it, but explain it in business-like terms. Keep cutting the cost of operation to drive the investment. Don't let the suppliers get away from you. Really manage that and uh, try and lead your people. So, here we are. We're on the final, final lap. Um, and finally, um, what I wanted to do um, was put up some, uh, I've called them maxims, but they're, they're, they're sort of attempts at CIO one-liners. Uh, they're, they're not meant to be funny. Um, they're meant to be useful. <laughs> um, they might be funny a little, um, but we'll see. Anyway, so CIO maxims. If you outsource your brain, you outsource your wallet. Um, so every outsourcer, wherever they come from, whichever country they come from, their job, they probably say it isn't, but you know, actually, really what they want to do is to remove your ability as CIO IT director to choose. They want to claw their way up the value chain. And that's fine, that's the game, we all know it is. But if you lose control of how your technology is put together, how it comes together, how it relates to your business, what's commodity, what's leading age, all that good stuff. If you do that, if you lose control of that, you have outsourced your wallet. Don't do it. Um, a top person in business or politics or the civil service should no more say, I don't understand my IT than they would, I don't understand my balance sheet. I think this is the English disease. I don't think... And I hasten to add, you know, for the record, um, this is not true of where I worked or where I work at the moment. But, you know, you go around the place and you hear people say, I don't understand technology, it's too difficult. You would not hear that from an important person, a serious person in San Francisco or Boston or Bangalore or Shanghai. You know, it is just not acceptable these days in the second decade of the 21st century to pretend you don't understand technology. It would be like somebody saying, I, don't, I can't read a balance sheet. If somebody said that to a board, they'd be sacked. It ought to be the same. Doesn't mean they should try and do our jobs. That's our job to be CIO. But it is really important that I think you know, we you know, encourage you know, that technology matters so much to Britain's, UK's competitivity. You know, we really need, and Karen uh, from eSkills is in the audience, we absolutely have to invest in our people, in our GCE courses, in our degree courses, in our apprenticeships, in our on-the-job training. 
to be really excellent at technology. Doesn't mean we have to do it all ourselves in this country. But if we can't do technology in the UK, if top people can't understand it, we've had it. It really does matter. It is the you know, entry price you know, for the rest of this century. Strategy is about choices. IT strategy is about choosing where you want IT to be commodity, fast follower, or where leading edge. I talked about that a bit earlier. I do think it's terribly important. Every organization tries to be best at everything. You can't be. You have to make choices, and that really is what strategy is. A company that rejects social networking should adopt a dodo as its logo. And here's a dodo. I really do think you have to do this. Um, I happen to like it, but I don't think it's optional these days. If you're not frightened, you either don't understand the job of CIO or you're not really CIO. Um, I do enjoy being CIO. I love it. But, well, just before this talk, <laughs> I was certainly scared to death uh, in a different way. But, you know, those big cutovers, you know, I really, really don't like being there. Um, I, I know um, the sort of the, the Pauline, who's a colleague of mine, has, uh, has you know really quite enjoys things like that. Um, I don't. Um, I, I'm really quite scared because I know what's riding on it. Um, and actually, what you're doing is you're trusting people. At the end of the day, however really good a manager or really good a leader, a really good technologist you are, or how much code you could write, you can't test everything. At the end of the day, you're trusting your suppliers, your people, your project managers to get it right. And it's actually, at the end of the day, your accountability and your judgment. And that can be, you know, quite frightening. So if you don't have um, queasy moments, I don't think you're really doing the job. But you've probably got tougher skin than me. Yeah. Um, I say I've learned the hard way that IT is a team sport. I, I think you do need your flashy strikers, uh, you know, going to weave uh, around uh, the opposition. But you do need some, uh, you know, really workmanlike defenders for those, uh, you know, cold Saturdays in February. Uh, when uh, things do get tough. Um, and as I say, you know, you know, when something goes down, goes wrong, you're going to be dependent on the skills of everyone there. And it may be a little regarded legacy system that was put in 15 years ago, but you are going to rely on somebody knowing how it works, how it interacts, where the issues are. And when they solve it, you're going to want to hug them. Or oh, I do, anyway. Um, you know, because, you know, they knew how it all fitted together. Um, so it really is a team sport. And I think there's some really interesting issues um, there about how you reward people and, you know, how you, you know, get the right behaviors from folks. Because you do need to reward the stars appropriately, but you also need to recognize uh, that the whole thing, because it all relates together, wouldn't work unless everybody knew what they were doing. And finally, of course, there are no IT projects, only business projects, which is the one thing if you Google me, um, hopefully you will uh, uh, find. And I came up with this years ago, and it really, really resonated. And it really, really is important, and it works, you know, which is all we are there for, because we are IT directors, chief information officers, is to deliver the technology that the business leads, whether that's leading edge or legacy or commodity, at the price that the business wants. So everything we do should be about the business. And even if that's putting in a new, uh, you know, uh, a, a new refresh, you know, the only reason for spending the money is it actually delivers business benefit and it you know, is needed because you need to be secure. And if you can't explain why you need to do it for business reasons, you should really, really think again. So all being well, uh, you end up bestriding the, uh, the business uh, like a, a, a colossus, uh, if you do these things. Here's uh, Augustus, who uh, had a good run for his money. Um, and then there's somebody at the bottom saying, I want my iPad. And, uh, um, <laughs> next. So that really is it. Uh, over to you, questions and answers. This is the Ides of March. Uh, there he is being stabbed um, by uh, there. So I hope it's not going to be quite like that. Um, but... Uh, Thoughts and questions. Simon, are you going to be Master of Ceremonies? First of all, I would like to ask everybody to give uh, a sincere round of applause. Thank you. Thank you very much.